This episode is brought to you by Hub24, whose purpose is to connect advisors to innovative solutions that create opportunity. They're massive supporters of advisors, in particular those going solo, uh, and they're one of the early players in the managed account space, and, and their epic functionality in that area, as well as their commitment to user experience, has led them to become a market leader in terms of advisor satisfaction. I can speak from personal experience when I say their BDM team are total legends, and they're there to help you work through the best solutions for your business. So you can check out more information at hub24.com.au. This episode is also brought to you by Centuria, who are a boutique ultra high performing fund manager. They've won pretty much all the awards there are to win. Uh, They've got a bunch of five star rated funds and they're heavy into technical support for advisors around their products and strategies. On top of that, they're just an awesome group of people and they've got a dedicated team there to support you. And if you haven't already spoken to the guys at Centuria and heard about what they do, do yourself a favor and reach out. Peter! Hey! Good this to is see you. exciting. Yeah. Good to see you too. First time in the studio with us. I know. How flash is this? Well, i I got to say it's just transformed from like they've really, they've really managed the expectations well. We started like practically in a garage yeah. with these guys <laughs> and they've, they've got this new destination and they've been fitting it out. So we've sort of had a bit of a setup and... And they said, hey, we rocked up and there's like the Snickers on the table. It's they so got cool. water over there. Like it's Well, that's a bit like a VC though, right? You build the app in the garage and then mm, you get some more funding. And yeah. like the, you know, that's just the path of a great there's, business. There's a lean startup. That's exactly. A, yeah. So it's um, it's a pleasure to have you here as always. It's a pleasure to be here. I've had a Snickers. I've had some V. I'm happy. She's, oh, we're going to get everything <laughs> from her. All the energy. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going to point and then it? Then I'll right? crash. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. That's your husband can take care of that. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's his problem. So, um, I I don't know where to start. There's so much cool stuff happening with you at the moment, isn't there, Peter? Like, what do you what do you feel like talking about? What's Why, on your mind? Yes, we've um, well, particularly personally, we've it's been a bit of a transition for me in the last twelve months. It's always accidental with me. I'd love to say that there was just like this grand plan. Mm. <laughs> That's not how it works. Uh, <laughs> um, I just respond to situations. And something we've done is approach speaking with a purpose. So I've sort of, and I'm sure, you know, some of the listeners have maybe seen me present at a conference or something like that, mm. um, or at one of the X, Y, event, mm-hmm. you know, advisor events. But so it was always, hey. you really sent the benchmark for MCs in that event. Hey. Uh, I don't know, everyone, I think everyone who's been MCing lately, they're like, they they watch that one to see how to do it. Uh, you know, and once again, do it with purpose. So um, I sort of, and I enjoy doing that. I love being on stage. Mm. Um, and would you believe, I, I mean, I did tap dancing for 20 years. And so actually there was a history to this that I'd never connected to business. Mm. And it's just in the last 12 months we've realised that you should tap dance on stage. I should tap dance on stage. That's exactly <laughs> what we've realised. Seriously? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, how boring. Um, I don't know. Maybe I, for a moment I'd of it. But not after that. But we realised that actually two things. One, presenting lights me up and I actually really enjoy it. Mm. Um, and I enjoy the one-to-many. I like influencing more than mm. just the one-to-one. So, so it ticks that ideological box. Right, exactly, mm. and impacting change. And the second thing is that there aren't many people doing it. Um, and actually making it a business. So I've now actively gone out to get training in the business of being a speaker. Mm. And so it's with purpose that I'm following this. So building a website about it, having a speaker kit, having so we're uh, like attacking it like a mission like you would in your business. Mm. So um, And that's been really interesting because when you are selling your skills like that on stage, you're selling your personality. Mm. Trying to describe that is really hard. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, the listeners out there, it's like when you do your LinkedIn profile, like it's the most awkward thing you've ever written in your life. What's my job um, title? They know do, do, numbers do. and like super. Like it's just, yeah. it's right. It used to be an actuary. Right. It's just, it's horrendous. Whereas um, when you go through this process, you've got to create words that can help people tap into what you're like. Mm. So it's almost like tapping in how you would describe me to somebody else. Mm. Would you, you ideally know? just become a better communicator? 
That's a hundred percent what it is, and it's and I think you become less um, self conscious about who you are, so you sort of start to own who you are. Mm. So one of the characteristics we tapped into for me was that I'm cheeky, like I'm just one of those. You know, I'm going to say something maybe a little blue, or I'm going to challenge people, or I'm going to make fun of myself. Like there Can was. Can you a please not do that in this podcast? We're very, <laughs> we're a bit conservative. I. I know. Yeah, I understand. I don't know how to put deal with the jokes. The most conservative group of people in the industry, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so knowing yourself well and working out that things that you might have previously thought were a negative or mm-hmm. something you'd hire, actually you doubled down on. Mm. So that's been a really interesting process and very challenging. Luckily, I've got a speaker coach and also a graphic designer who, and they've come to know me really well and mm-hmm. so they'll push back. Mm-hmm. Like, no, 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 rewrite that. That's absolutely not you. Yeah, they've got they've seen what can be done Abs- or what how you can exactly, be presented. Exactly, mm. exactly. And if you think about the best speakers you've seen, um, very rarely would you use words like corporate or you know professional in the buttoned up sense, right? Mm. The best ones, mm. and maybe they got their seen, own thing going they on. They do, yeah. right? Mm. I mean, maybe you've seen a Gary V or a Seth Godin or some of these guys. Like it's it, they're them, mm. and they've sort of tapped into the essence of what that is gone hard with it and share that really well. Mm. So, Have you found the, yeah, I'm presuming this is the case, but the deeper you've gone there, the the easier and more effective your speaking has been? 100%. So it creates a real structure for how you then build a presentation. Mm, you're not referencing external factors. You're going, uh, how it, do I? Exactly. Why, why do I want to do this? What impact do I want to have on the audience? Mm. And therefore you design it that way. So, and that's part of what I'm learning is this, um, you know, speaking with purpose. So actually having, you know, a mission to what you're presenting and how you do mm. it. So it's been really interesting. And it's actually changed both the way that we're going to engage with the public and the way we're going to engage with other advisors. Mm. So, um, um, I've been looking at what we all attend and, and the sort of training we can get or, you know, mm. that sort of availability. And while we can get potentially inspiration, you know, you go to a conference and there'll be some highfalutin, awesome, maybe it'll be a sports person or you know, something mm. like an inspirational one. Mm-hmm. And then you might get to go to something where they're flagging a new idea. Or I mean, you and I have both spoken at events where we'll mm. flag something we're doing. Mm-hmm. But the gap we've identified is the, the literal how-tos. So mm. it's, okay, there's that awesome thing. I'm inspired. I know I should do something. How do you break it down? What the hell do I do now? Mm. <laughs> what do I do first? What do I do second? What are the challenges? What are the resources? Where do I? So um, we're, we've decided we're just going to try and fill that gap. So I sort of want to curate stuff. So mm. I travel the world going to FinCon and all these other events. How do I curate some of that so that then advisors can come? Maybe it's to a workshop. I don't know. Mm. And we'll get it done in that day. Yeah. They'll walk away with a completed thing, whatever that yeah, is. Yeah, I think it, I suppose you're being conscious of the, the whole learning journey and sort of, okay, well, Okay, this this bit's been taken care of. So you got to do this bit first. You got to get the excitement going. Then exactly. you got to then you got to sort of break it down a bit and get a bit more sort of under the bonnet. Yeah. And then you got to go. How do you take some action? Yeah. yeah. And, there's, <laughs> and obviously, there's a few different formats that can be done. Correct. And all of them are relevant. I think that's what somebody said to me. Oh, do you mean that you know industry conferences are, are bullshit? No, not at all. Mm. I think they just all play a different role. So mm. you know, for us, for me, I want to shake you up a little. Mm. inspire you to think a bit differently, but then I'm going to hold your hand mm. and we'll get it done. Yeah. You know, we'll be right there. Whereas I know when I go to some of these events, I come away with 47 pages of ideas mm. and nothing really happens after that. Mm. <laughs> so, they were awesome. Back to the day. What am I doing today? Like, Yeah, so, the rest of the world just right? comes back and hits exactly, you in the face. Exactly. So what we want to try and do is make sure people can come away with some momentum and result. Mm. Um, and sometimes – you know, often you'll look at those things. It's a bit like getting a personal trainer. We all know we should move more. Mm-hmm. We should eat better. Mm-hmm. It's not like I need a personal trainer to tell me that, right? Mm-hmm. So what they're there for is to give you some structure, step you through it, mm-hmm. and then hold your hand as you go. Mm-hmm. And so that's sort of the, what we're looking to that's provide. That's the concept Yeah, is, is just to help people take action. What about for the, some of the people that, I guess, I don't know, I, I feel that there's a lot of good people out there that could be sharing good stuff yep and they're held back from getting out there and maybe knocking back um opportunities to to get out there and because they may not be as um like the sound of their own voice as much as some others yes um speaking nobody in particular (laughs) two people in this room (laughs) okay but what what do you what message do you have for them and what what do you yeah that's yeah that's a big gap so in fact um in these four walls 
<laughs> <laughs> I've been talking to my speaking coach on this, mm. Andrew Griffiths, and we're thinking about doing an art of storytelling and essentially presentation workshop mm. so that people who have an awesome thing they want to share with the industry, mm-hmm. an idea, a structure, an offer, whatever it is, um, but like you say, it's just not natural to them to do this, mm. can learn how to structure maybe even a training program, how to structure a presentation, how mm. to do all of that, and then make the decision about whether they want to present it or they get somebody else to present mm. it. Because there's lots of ways to do that. So mm. if somebody is either shy or just isn't a natural storyteller that way, mm. all you need is to sit them next to somebody who is mm-hmm. – and you can run a decent event. They learn about it and then but well, also, they do a tag team. And, right. Because, yeah. because say say I'm the person that sits next to them, then my job is just to draw that knowledge out of them. Mm. Right? So, it's a bit like a podcast. Exactly. Yeah. So And you can run events that way and you mm. can all training that way. So mm. And the best ones do. When you've seen – we've all been to probably underwriter things, you know, mm-hmm. when they're underwriter. The best ones – are when there's a person with the underwriter or the actuary mm. who draws out that knowledge because they're the ones that are a good communicator. The mm-hmm. other person has all this in- knowledge and insight. Mm. The combo is awesome. We just had an awesome dude on today, so we don't know when the order of these podcasts are coming out. <laughs> right. But um, Daniel Murray and he, this guy just, he's like, he's a, actually very similar to you. Mm-hmm. Got this full mathematics background. And has completely focused these days on the psychology of the human element, and um, and he's got this this business where he goes into businesses and helps them sort of tap into um, the way people relate to themselves, Behavior. each other. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, fantastic. That. And one of the key things was being able to see the other side of everything. Yeah, and and also the example that we were going through is like dropping in different types of people to get different results, obviously. Correct. Um, and that's what you're talking about here. Yeah. it's um, The outcome can be delivered so many different ways. And so mm. you might be something of an introvert um, mm. but have developed a fabulous um, I don't know, insurance offer that's knocking the socks out of millennials and they're all but like it's, mm. so something fabulous and you want to share and are willing to share, mm. then it doesn't mean you have to do that. You don't even have to be the one that presents. Mm. You could just partner with somebody else that does. I love this concept. Right? So yeah. it's just – if if you've got the mission, just find another way to get it done. Because yeah. you're right, not every. I mean, I love getting on stage. I mean, I've even presented somebody else's present presentation historically. <laughs> I was given ten minutes notice. The person didn't turn up. We had the slides. I read through it. I got the brief and I went up and presented. Did that scare me? No, I love that fun. Yeah. Now, I did admit to the audience that this is somewhat new to me. They didn't know it was 10 minutes new, well, but somewhat new to me, so please give well, it a take. It's almost easier when the expectation isn't there. Yeah, but I think I think also um, if you're relaxed, the audience relaxes. Mm. So I was relaxed about it. I said, you know, lots of questions. I made sure I had some experts there. So the people that were sort of to the side of the presenter that were the technical experts Good I question. had next to me. Bob. Exactly. What do you think about that? Exactly. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, if you can get, so that's my that's my sweet spot. You know, mm. I love doing that. Um, I love – so I've just done some sessions at the end of last year and we had a presentation I did for 45 minutes, but then we had 45 minutes of brainstorming. And instead of me putting the audience on the spot, they put me on the spot. Mm. So – I've got this I- I've got this idea for a coaching offer. Mm-hmm. What do you reckon? And I would grill them backwards and forwards until we narrowed it down. Okay. So I was on the spot then, you know. And so but that's I love that. Yeah. So you've just got to find somebody who fills the gaps. Like yeah. you say, it's the multiple either styles or talents and just bring them together. Yeah. You know, yeah, don't yeah. be everything yourself. Right. If you really want to do it, you so can I get it done. So next time I've, I've, I talk to someone that's really cool, I won't try to force them to just come out with as themselves sort of thing. No. I'll come up with an idea of who we could pair them with. Correct. To make them a super team. Correct. And, uh, and and you can see that that happens a lot actually in VCs. So there'll be the um the geek, you know, the person that's sort of the you know doing all of the nerdy stuff mm-hmm. and then they'll have that salesperson. Mm. Right? And when you get that combo, it works beautifully. You know, so you get the person who can tell the story and get everybody excited and then you've got the nerd that go, Yeah, I can do that, no problem, I'm doing it now while you're presenting, you know. Yeah, be like, um, yeah, we can we can do this, can't we? Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yep, yep, so, done yeah. it already. Yeah. Fixed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think um and, and there's a lot in terms of a gap in the industry, I do think there's a gap in developed presentation skills. Mm. I think we all learn them, right? So we sit in front of a client and we learn engagement mm. one on one. But I don't think we really get much in communication, storytelling, mm. listening well, actively, you know, that sort of stuff, but also putting that 
and applying it to all parts of your business. Well, I think the narrative one's quite uh, pertinent, you might say. Yeah. Because like I th- you like and I I'm still far from getting that that aspect because it's a much more structured aspect. Yeah. It's it's very easy for certain people to if they've if they've got the ability to just sort of communicate or engage yeah. and get a certain level of engagement because you're at that level it's so okay well that's enough to actually do this yeah. but it's taking things to the next level and going well if you put this structure around it you're going to get this outcome that's maybe a bit more effective yeah and what i'd say about structure it's interesting um in dancing and certainly in sport you give people structure so that they know it well enough that they can freestyle mm. right so if you look at so i'm rugby league fan, if you look at a team like the Melbourne Storm, mm-hmm. they're a very structured team. But the reason they practice a particular plays so much is so that in a moment a player can react and the and the play can – but it's freestyling. Mm. It's not like they go in the 57th minute, Billy's going to have the ball on the left-hand side of the field. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. They get enough repetition and structure that then they can freestyle. And mm-hmm. I think we don't do that in business enough, you know, where we – acknowledge it's got to be structured initially, mm. gives us comfort, we learn, and then that lets us sort of you know, freestyle and react. Mm. And you're right, the storytelling needs that. Yeah. You know, the narrative well, What's the most effective that. way of communicating? It like, really I'm, is. My, the way I've been talking about things so much these days, I'll, I'll constant talk, constantly talk about anything that's going on. And it's like, okay, well, if it's about communication, whether it's marketing, whether it's between people, like – I don't think the narrative is right. I don't. Yeah. And it's not like it's not like you're making up a story. It's just like it's not – there's not enough depth to like people's perception of what you want to communicate there. Yeah. And there's a uh, there's an interesting difference that I didn't realise until it was pointed out to me. But when somebody's telling you or selling, you know, mm. only one letter difference and there's a reason they're the same thing, right? Mm. Telling and selling are the same thing. Our natural reaction to that – is defensive. Mm. So we're like, dude, not comfortable. You're trying to sell me. I'm going to doubt everything you say. Mm-hmm. If instead you tell a story, what happens is you literally take the audience on the bus with you. Mm. So they're in- instantly empathetic because mm-hmm. you're just telling a story. Mm-hmm. Now, the fact that the outcome of that is a particular message or narrative, mm. they will get subliminally anyway, mm. but it's because you didn't tell them. Mm. You took them on a journey. And it's like a switch in the brain. It's instantaneous, yep. you know, and, and it's what advertising does so badly mm. <laughs> and why it's failing badly. I mean, I don't know anybody that's watched an ad recently and gone, awesome, I'm going to buy that product. doesn't work that way anymore. Mm. Um, well, yeah. I guess one of the places you can learn is, as icky sometimes as they can be is like Facebook ads. Yeah. And the way – well, not Facebook ads, like I guess some – the communicators on yeah, Facebook. Yeah. So what the and like a lot of it's the same sort of stuff. Um, well, because Facebook is so targeted on you're that demographic, so you're going to get these people. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the the narrative that like some of them are really good, and the ones that you see and they're still there a year later, they're good because they, they they've got their narrative around why they're there, what they're doing. Yeah what their background is, they're sharing something of themselves. And And interestingly, what often they're doing is, I mean, it's called an ad in Facebook, but they don't make it an ad. They Mm. share a, whether it's a blog post, a video or whatever it is, Mm. that that tells a story. Mm. And that naturally helps you assess whether I'm one of those people too. Ooh, Mm. I'm like them. Mm. And then it leads to sales. Mm. They don't, whereas the people that screw this up just go straight for the sell, sell, sell. You know, mm. it may as well be in neon and flashing. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> it doesn't work. Whereas the clever people sell the story. And so that's what the ad's for. Mm. It's just getting connection that way. Um, in FinCon, a lot of the bloggers do that. So they mm. actually use Facebook just to promote their blog posts. They don't promote their online program. They don't promote the other stuff. They promote their posts because mm. that's how you get the community. That's mm. how they connect with the stories. And then you let the next piece of information they read tell them about whatever they could buy. Yeah, it's you know, interesting. It's a, different, it's a different approach. Well, I want to touch on, I guess, the the development of this content because I think it's a really um, interesting point to discuss around how easy it is to get it out there. But where, like, people say, oh, I spend more time on it, but what, what are you spending time on? So often the bit that people think the time spent on is around actually the like how do you execute on it or how do you like the idea is the easy bit but how do you execute whereas my interpretation of what you're saying is like okay really think about the narrative and then when you do it just just do it yeah because i think 
anybody would say, and we're talking about, so FinCon bloggers, some of them are earning half a million a year from blogging, right? Mm. So it's not like, you know, hashtag fail, not at all. You mm. know, this is a business for them. Um, and what's interesting for them is when you get the right message or blog or whatever it is, the mm. content, then if it only reaches 10 but every one of them act, mm. that is better than it reaching 10,000 mm. and only five acting. Yep. And I think we all chase the big numbers. But it's not what we need, right? You but need what about mess- everyone else? Right. It's like you've got to stop caring. If you can work out mm. who you're talking to and you get every one of them, you will be busy for the rest of your life. So I think it's it's nailing, narrowing down who you're talking to and what about. Mm. Um, and lots of there's been lots of mistakes made that way. So the focus on SEO and all that sort of stuff, mm. that is incremental. Mm. If your content isn't good for the audience you're trying to target, no amount of SEO is going to help. Mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Click once, never click again. That's what will happen. You yeah, know, so well, yeah SEO, you'll get the clicks. But the first bit happen. of SEO is sort of, I guess, employing old school – just get out there and there'll be a percentage of people that want to deal with you yeah. and just sort of doing it in a different way. Yeah. Whereas now, like, it's definitely evolved to, uh, like, if, and, like, Facebook targeting is a form of SEO as well. It's like... And I think it, we can get clever with this stuff. So, um, and I'm going to forget the name. What's the online design thingy that we've all used? That Canva? Does the, no, the, that does the competitions. And I, the name's just the completely... Competitions. That does the design competitions online. It's oh, 99 Designs. Thank you. That oh, they've like my brain just melted them, instantly. Right, so um, I've seen him present at a blogging conference, one of the guys that works for them. Mm. And interestingly, what they did to get more community, more traction and more take up wasn't blah advertising or, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, what they did was when somebody signed up, if you've ever used the app or the tool, when you load up something, a brief, mm-hmm. And then people compete f- to win your business, mm-hmm. designers. And then you might pick, oh, I like these five designs. Then what they do is they give you a way to share that with your community and get people to vote in your community. Mm. So I can share it on Facebook and go, look, guys, I'm getting a new logo design for a T-shirt for something, uh, for FinCon. You know, we're heading to F- Aussies at FinCon. You know, here's the T-shirt. Rate them for me. Mm. And you send it out to your community. Now, what that does is... I have, I don't know how many, 1,500 or something people on Facebook. So suddenly I have advertised 99 designs Mm -hmm. subliminally to my entire network, a good portion who have gone in and voted Mm. and then go, wow, that was cool. What's that about? Mm. So they actually, as part of their process of engaging with paying customers, they encourage a viral nature. And that was intentional on their part. That wasn't accidental. So the purpose while it gives it a great result because you get good feedback, people will go. Are you adding oh, value dude. to the customer? Right, experience. so they get yeah. So they're mm. like, oh yeah, you know, I can't read this or this doesn't work. Like you get good feedback, but actually the purpose of it was to get the word out. Mm. And so we've been thinking about that with um, what we're doing on the dream side. So this is for the public, taking them on a dream crusade is that one of the journey could be getting them to sign up their dream team of their mates that are going to help them achieve the goal they have. Mm. And that can be anyone between two and ten people and suddenly one person ten turns into 10. So you're setting up the community. accountability framework. Right, but that also builds your community mm. in multiple. So we've got exponential growth. Is this in your business or is this in this the broader is in, dream? This is in our sort of Zaptitude site, so the financial literacy and the yeah. dream stuff. So so it's with intent. It's doing mm. that stuff with intent, you know. That's so cool. that was a clever – I thought, ooh, that's a bit ninja, mm. you know. And so I think um, – we can we can take advantage of both a customer journey, which is awesome, mm-hmm. but also tapping into things that mean we're not just advertising to the public, like just yelling. Mm. We're getting people who like us to find other people who like us. It's almost and like affiliate marketing. Like it. it is. That's exactly what it is. It's but it's, it's it's viral. You know, it's 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 um, zombies. But it's just <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you, you, it's um. It's almost like it's almost like the marketing that um, how to how to engage like a, I know we're talking to Jess Brady in terms of how they they did the they they um, researched and did focus groups around how they were positioning their advice and what their messaging was and what they were covering yeah and what people's perceptions were yeah and that research process is marketing in itself correct and it's just such a win win because they're getting the great way to actually then serve these people. And these people are getting um, – they're earning – oh, sorry. They're learning about 
the, the business, correct. Yeah, the business and asking building trust help, in them. Asking for feedback is one of the best ways to build a community. It's awesome. Mm. And because they feel invested, they're like part of the beta group. You well, know? I help and, them. Oh, it's I... so great. And they, they listen to me. I feel mm. engaged. They're instantly 20 steps closer to you than they were before. Mm. Uh, it's so powerful. Um, and I don't think really as an industry we do it enough. No. You know, so if somebody's thinking of a new offer, the first thing you should do is go out there and survey as many of the of them as you can and get them to share it with their mates mm. and get that feedback and they'll want to know more. Mm. Why are you doing this survey? What's yeah. it for? What do you do? Like it's just natural. It's human What's nature. the, um, I think, yeah, what everyone's battling against there is we're meant to know, aren't we? Right. But we, do, well. Well, and that's. <laughs> no, because because life isn't like that. Well, that's true. Right. So, so who are we to say? So what have we got? Well, we've got qualifications and experience in financial advice. Now, mm. That means we can probably crunch a few numbers. We mm -hmm. understand financial markets mm -hmm. and we can do crap loads of paperwork. Right? That, mm -hmm. Like if you look at all of that, none of that gives us an expertise in marketing, research, uh, understanding the human psyche necessarily. So I think we just need to acknowledge that and say to the public, we want to know you better so we can do better. Mm. Yep. You know? And I, they love it when we do that. Any yeah. industry that does that, the public are like, thank goodness, because you guys have been talking gibberish for years. You know? <laughs> so it's relief. Well, I haven't heard any business that has done the, a survey process say that it was a bad idea. No. So No. And I think lots do it of their current clients. Mm. Um, I don't know that many just go out to the public generally. Mm. And the thing is with social media now, um, if you think about however many people you say are connected to on Facebook – and then however many they're connected to, the pool of people you've got you've got ability to tap into sort of, you know, one um, degrees of separation mm. away is in the thousands. Mm. So it's if, if you honestly just ask for help, mm -hmm. people will go nuts, you know, and you will get some real feedback. I think the challenge when you only survey your current clients is it's a very – it's a microcosm of the mm. world out there. You're doubling down. You might – Double down on that, but you may, you're missing out on correct. Out so it's there. both, you know. Mm. And it's like anything; it's not either or. It's both. What do you reckon about doing like a little crash podcast course now in dreams? And so, if we if we sat down here now and we said, yep. okay, let's 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 if if an advisor's listening, they they want to add. A certain level of engagement, human to their, level to the way they're engaging. Yeah, yep. take it, do something different, have a go at something new. Yeah, what can we do? So yeah, okay. So if we focus on dreaming, then the thing I think that's a switch for an advisor mm -hmm. is I believe we need to acknowledge that people don't have one goal in life. Mm -hmm. Right? We have loads, and they change all the time. Mm -hmm. And the more we interact with the world, the more they change. Mm -hmm. right? The more you travel, the more you want to travel, right? It's it's like that, so the more you're absorbing. So, in fact, if you want to help open up your clients' minds to possibilities, then it's actually about encouraging them to have a habit of dreaming. So this is not a one-off. You come to your first meeting, let's talk about your goals or dreams. Mm -hmm. We write them down and we achieve them. It's potentially having a way to engage even before that where they just start collecting lots of different things. And the word I use a lot to get people thinking is, what are you curious about? about mm. what's that thing where you go i really wish i knew how that worked mm. or i really want to understand that i mean you were talking uh earlier about komodo dragons and, and mm. right so somebody's probably curious about have either read a book or watched one of the many david annabra awesome series mm. i'd love to go and see them in the wild you know so but people forget that stuff so what we encourage them to do is have a habit of dreaming what are they curious about what do they mm. wonder about and then start knocking them off systematically mm. so it's well, building a habit it. exactly mm. writing it down um and you know I've, I've got my book in my bag at all times and i yeah. constantly add to it um and then so you're running out of pages there when you yeah <laughs> it's a moleskin so there's lots of pages oh, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> but i have to put multiple on a page definitely because yeah, there's yeah, just yeah. too <laughs> many things um but when you start thinking that way then you your understanding of what's possible broadens. Mm. I think lots of us would have seen clients, particularly clients approaching retirement, where what they imagine they can do is really narrow mm -hmm. and dreaming can trigger that imagination. Mm. You know, and, and it can really – and we do have this thing in us that's like imagination capital. It's like an asset. Mm. And if you're not tapping into that and developing and working it, it can disappear. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get really narrow. We become sort of like human hamsters. So, so depending on where, I guess – what people's level of practice 
they are of thinking that way, then yeah. you you got different. I suppose you got to go baby steps with people that have sort of closed off to thinking. Correct, like and so sometimes, um, so so yeah, there's some people where they're just they're in that hamster mode. You know, they're just surviving, right? Shut down, um, life's tough, or you know, they're really struggling. Then, even if you're doing a fact find process, you're doing that first meeting. Um, you can go through that information, and then I'll try and throw them off a bit. Whoa. In retirement, but what if you had like $50,000 extra a year to do something? What would you do? Mm. Right. And so when you take off the the limits of the dollars, mm-hmm. you start to hear the real things they wish they could do. Mm-hmm. Not the things they think society thinks they should do or their kids think they should do or, mm-hmm. you know, like this structure, it that starts to open up and you hear some crackers, like mm. some – and. In a couple, you'll one of them will say something, the other one never knew they wanted to. I had a, an older couple, and all he'd ever wanted to do, as it turns out, was um, get a really old Harley and do it up and then drive around Australia. He They'd been married 40-plus years, mm. and he had never shared that. Now, interestingly, that's not a ridiculous dream in dollar-wise. Like, it's not – that's no. not unachievable for most – for many people. Mm. But he just never thought, A, it was really possible. Where would I start? I don't know anything about doing such a thing. How would I learn? Mm. And there's no way my wife would want to do that. Or, or, you know, like he had just completely discounted his own dream before he'd even let it become a, a, a word on a page. Mm. And that's why the the habit of just writing them down and sort of accepting them almost, like, mm. yeah, that's cool. That's a cool dream. We're just putting it in the dream list. Mm. Subtle you way up. Of it is. It, it frees into- you up. Yeah, so that your brain doesn't go, dude, that's never going to happen. Mm. And then you just let it go. Mm. And he's all – so it was a couple so of years it's ago. It's a semi-commitment. Like it's a, it's sort of, it's a well, it's an acknowledgement. Yeah. And, and it's um, – that imagination capital thing is really interesting. So we've started talking to corporates who are using dreaming and, and are talking about building this habit mm. to then help tap into innovation in a business. Because mm. if you can't imagine your own future and mm-hmm. the all the, the richness of that tapestry, mm. how are you going to imagine a different business? How mm. are you going to imagine a different way to do things, right? Mm. So it's sort of – tapping into a part of our brain, that dream muscle, that means we can look broader than where we are now. We can look, imagine differently. That's a much broader you know? application. of It is. And I, it, it once again happened accidentally. <laughs> so it was because I got approached for a speaking gig and they said, oh, but, you know, this is the topic. And we just started a conversation and she said, oh, I think we, we're going to have to have this or else nobody <laughs> will innovate. I'm done. Well, you know? it's really relevant. Yeah, like, it that, is. Because I think like what you're – well, if you look at the current state of – business and evolution of business and like technology and everything you just the only way to advance is to think differently yeah because like if something has already been done a certain way it's getting if it's done like that it gets commoditized done yeah. well there's more competitors okay yep we can see that yep we'll do that we'll do it quicker we'll do it more efficiently we'll come in with new technology yeah sweet the only way you're going to do something that's going to take you ahead in the market or like from a business standpoint is by doing something differently. Yeah, correct. That hasn't been done. And if you haven't tapped into your imagination for a long time, and the easiest ma- imagination is thinking about fun things to do, right? Not all of us can paint, I wish I could. Not all of us can sing, like all those creative things. Mm. But all of us can take a moment to go, oh, I wish I was in Fiji or I wish I was, you know, that sort of stuff. If we're not doing any of that, I firmly believe we can't tap into any imagination for in any business sense, whether you're the owner, whether you work, the, you know, like, I, how could you possibly, if you're not doing it for yourself, there's no way you're going to do it in the so office. So you're talking about people's pastimes. and All of that, yeah. right? So, and the more you're doing, the richer your home or the richer your out of work life, mm-hmm. I believe the richer your work life will get. So, so as they're experiencing so more. Star Wars. Um, all of that. So going to the <laughs> Star Wars. So there's now a cruise that's a Star Wars themed cruise and there's a, there's an that's entire resort. In the book, isn't right. it? Right. There's an that. entire resort in the States. <laughs> or have you already been there? No, no, no. I, it's I, in the book. Rest- it's in the book. <laughs> so the resort that's themed Star Wars, right? And people go, well, how's that going to impact your business? When I go and attend that, I will interact with different people. I will experience different things. Um, I will see storytelling in its richest form. Mm. I mean, the Star Wars ethos is an entire world that's been created where people, some people speak in languages from that thing. Right? Mm. So, so to witness that can only positively impact what I might do in a business. So the more we do, the more people we interact with, the more world part of the world we see, I think the 
broader your understanding of what you can do in a business mm. sense. And so I really see them inextricably linked now. Where yeah. I hadn't before. I hadn't made that connection. But it's almost like there's a step before innovation. It's mm. like if you're not getting the imagination happening, if you're not dreaming, innovation just isn't going to happen. You've got to get out of your environment. A hundred percent. It's well, why going overseas to these conferences and doing these things outside of the norm are really important. Well, travel's always – like I look at – I'm always a bit simplistic about it. Just go travel. <laughs> just travel. What? You want to buy a house? Why do you want to buy a house? Travel's so much fun. <laughs> but then I won't be able to buy a house. Eh, well. Well, and – look, it's funny. <laughs> we And th- that's actually part of the dreaming thing we're doing mm. is that reaction you just had or that, that – the inner sort of monologue thing <laughs> is is what most young people in Australia are going yeah, through. Yeah, totally. Right? And the issue is what you're fighting against is a societal expectation that you should. Mm-hmm. The problem is that what ultimately people are worried about for you is are you going to have enough money in the future to continue living? Like ultimately mm. that's what we're talking about, right? Mm. A home takes away one of the expenses. Once you've paid it off, mm. I know I've got a place to live, right? Yeah. It's not the only way to do it. Just make more money. And in fact, well, more than that, you could rent for life. You could get a small house. In fact, people in some of the best cities in the world do that. You could get a small house. Exactly. You could live in an apartment. Like there's so many options. You can become a backpacker. You can you can house share. There are actually people, there's entrepreneurs, there's this club you can join. I wish I could remember the name of it, where they just trade houses the whole time. Uh-huh. Right? And do you have to have one to start with, but No. So what oh. they're doing, so it's <laughs> like a house sitting sort of thing, but for entrepreneurs, okay. right? So for other people. And so they've brought together a whole lot of people that want their houses sort of broadly occupied most of the time. And then these entrepreneurs travel yeah, around yeah, and then yeah. they have events. Like, so there's, but that, what I just described requires imagination and creativity yeah, yeah, yeah. to even think it's possible. So somebody at we'll some build point Build up that went, trust network. Of, all of that, mm. right? Somebody went, wow, wouldn't it be cool if... So um, that's that's a whole lot of what we're talking about here too. Mm. And that's where travel, where you just let yourself experience the different is awesome, mm. you know. And you second guess stuff. Like, oh, that's not how we do it back home. Aren't we idiots? Like that happens to me all the time. I can't believe we make it that, that hard back home. Yeah. You know, and we do that a lot. So, so yeah, I think uh, this dreaming stuff is mm. I want to empower particularly young people to realise they don't have to do this white picket fence 2.5 kids Aussie mm. dream thing that is an awesome dream. So I'm not dissing the dream, but I think the people it applies to is narrower than it used to be. Mm. Is it – do you feel the need to – replace that with some other sort of fixed destination or is that what how do you yeah no, people need something to hang their hat correct. on don't so they? yeah you've just, like they still need absolutely. that security piece no so and because we're talking such like such a lateral so what happens is when you just go with society's expectation there's mm. a plan for you because mm-hmm. you've seen it before yep so my folks did that my older brother did that so i mm-hmm. just follow that so what happens is there's a path and a plan mm-hmm. if you don't do that all you need is to be taught strategic and critical thinking to create your own one so that's part mm-hmm. of what we do in the dream crusade we don't just teach you to build the habit we go right this is what you want to do now we're going to teach you how to make that a plan ah so you create i'm not fishermen. talking financial plan i'm talking life like a fishermen. bigger yeah exactly so build that lifestyle how do you go about doing that and mm-hmm. teach them that thinking because you're right, if it's not been done before or not by lots of people, you know, mm. and not by the media and all that sort of stuff. Where so the, the idea is to actually transfer the stability that's attached to the social conformity into, I guess, your own possibility. Correct. Own, it's self-confidence. So it's just yeah. I have chosen. It's And it's living with purpose, mm. right? It's having that. So it's actually tapping into that. I think for lots of us, you sort of go with the flow, right? You're like, no, oh, this is what's expected. I'll go to uni. No, oh, and then I've got to get a job. No, I'll do that, you know. Does this work with – because obviously you've got different types of personality. Does this work with people that are more cautious? How how do you – how have you yeah, seen absolutely, that play out? Yeah, absolutely. So – it's just the way, to be frank, they're probably better at it. So oh. um, your risk takers, and I'm generalising, mm. have a little bit of an attention problem. Mm-hmm. So, oh, this dream, oh, that dream, you know, attention deficit are shiny, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> and so they, they flick, whereas often what goes with conservative is sort of a methodical approach. Mm. So actually, once they get the confidence to go, you know what, I really want to do this thing. So you give them the structure, they can uh, actually They just it. follow it. They're right? not going to come off the path because no, that's what they've decided their Mission, right, yeah. focus. Whereas the others that are risk takers leap, right? And often it's like, dude, stop leaping. We've got some stuff to do first. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So actually, I would argue that the the tougher ones are the ones that that are, have a lot of that. They're easy to jump into the new ch- channel, but but then execute on it well. Exactly, and we've all seen 
both ends of that spectrum, mm. just in personalities. Um, so, yeah, I don't worry as much for the conservatives. I think you do have to – so cracking that dream muscle for them, like really cracking that is harder. Well, I was going to but, str- but the implementation isn't as hard, whereas mm. for your more, uh, you know, people who are happy to take a whole lot of risk are like come up with 400 dreams in seconds, mm. but it's harder to teach them the structure. It's a bit like when we've talked about speaking. I remember talking oh, – was it Lynn Chanello when she was presenting and talking about – the um, the extrovert versus the introvert in terms yeah. of speaking, like the extrovert's happy to jump in. You know, yeah, I'll do that. But to they to, don't practice as to much. Practice, they don't structure the framework, as much. All that sort of thing. It's that's exactly really hard the for them. Same. Whereas the introvert, who like it's harder for them to make that commitment. But once they have, they're they gonna nail it. Get it done. Yeah, exactly right. It's just exactly the same thing. Yeah, it's really interesting. What about time frames for this this cracking of the dream muscle? Yep. How for people listening? How what sort of if if you decide as an advisor you want to sort of think this way and try to and apply this sort of um, application to your clients and yep. to new clients, existing clients, what should they have in their mind from a time expectation? Uh, how long it's going to? Yeah. So I mean, it, it it's an interesting concept. And I think it's it, it's different for each client base or ideal client base. Mm. Um, so let's imagine you've got a little bit of a, a top end or a, a somebody that clients generally that will be paying a bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, then something that could be interesting is you could have um, a target pool of people, the same put sort of people you might have taken to like had an event for that mm-hmm. it might be prospects, right? So they're hot prospects, but not your clients. One of the things you could do as an alternative um, is to have something like, you know, a dream presentation. And in fact, I'm going to be doing that for other advisors where I'll, they'll have an event and I'll just come and do the prezzo. But then as part of that, there'll be a gift of like a moleskin diary thing or a notebook mm. to those attendees. Yep. And then the interaction with that person as a marketing effort mm-hmm. will just be about getting the entries into that book. Yep. So instead of selling them on insurance or, you know, anything like that, it's like, you know what, to make the advice we're going to do really impact you as a person, mm-hmm. I need you to build this muscle. So, so is I'm, it... Is it almost? I'm just trying to. I'm trying to correlate in terms of like you got a review meeting. Is that you're saying? Don't do it there. No. Well, I. So we're picking ideal versus reality, right? Yeah. So ideal. Okay. So you're saying is the ideal is that broader. build it up. It, use it as a marketing effort. Mm-hmm. First of all, make sure you've got your own because the best way to help other people build theirs is to share yours. Mm-hmm. All right. Weird and wonderful. The weirder the dream you've come up with, the more you need to share it mm-hmm. because it, it actually empowers that person to realise that their weird, weird dreams are mm-hmm. okay too. So to help them build that over a time, and that means you could have a tail or a build-up for prospects of a good 12 months. You could mm-hmm. actually have a bit of a journey that was like a, a loose marketing journey they went on mm-hmm. around dreams that helped them build that up. Then, without charging. Without So, yeah, that yep. could be your marketing tool. Mm-hmm. Then at the first meeting, that you they could bring that book and one of the things you do is help them pick the top three they want to knock off shortly. Mm. So, they, so instead of you doing, what are your goals? Mm. And that blank look, you know that blank, they all get it, right? Um, I have more money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I just love it. Like, what are you talking about? So you, what you'll have done is get them to build almost like a big, you know, brainstorm of possibilities. And then in the first meeting, you're helping them clarify which ones are important to them mm. and pick some. Mm-hmm. Your first lot of advice can address those specifically mm-hmm. as part of the advice. And at a review meeting, what I'd encourage you to do is look back to the ones they'd picked, mm-hmm. share their photos, how did it go, tell us all about that, and then pick the next ones. So um, a it's not a goal session that happens once forever It's a perpetual, what's the next thing you're going to knock off? Mm. So to me, it makes a review meeting far more interesting for all concerned Mm -hmm. because fun sharing achievement, places we've been, things I've learnt, I went and learnt salsa dancing or whatever it was. And then, right, well, what's next? What have you added? What are we going to do for next year? You've laid up what you need for advice, which is... You've yeah. then got your targets. Correct. It's really it really gives that um, the goals and objectives thing connected to advice more richness because mm. they're not those broad goals that really there's what I mean if you look at most um, SOA templates that I don't know twenty there's not many mm. that are sort of listed. It's making them really personal, mm. and you know the regulator and, and your compliance team that you have to uh, uh, 
you know, do your pre-vet and all that sort of, sort of thing for love detail. They love depth mm. in terms of you understanding a client, mm. you know, it's to know your client stuff. So if you can list, if you can say, well, they want to go to the Star Wars resort and then they want to <laughs> mm. they want to learn salsa dancing and go to Roar and Snore at Taronga Zoo. So I've just named three of mine. If you can list that in a, in a piece of advice and then show through the advice that you're helping them achieve that mm-hmm. and then in a review comment on that, I mean, how – that's fantastic. Mm. That's a depth that nobody can discount. Mm. You know, they can't. And and from a connection with the client, you talking about with them what you've achieved and what they've achieved and show me the photos. And, and what's more, the sort of um, content you get for social media and other things is fabulous too because mm. to get their sign-off. So we've done a review meeting. Guys, I love those photos at the Star Wars, the new Star can Wars share them? thing. Do, do you mind if we pulled a few together and share and tag you? Yeah, oh, that'd be awesome. You know, so – your your community or your clients are then providing you with the content. So you've still share. got. So you're saying there's still the the machinery of advice as we know it Correct. going on underneath. 100%. It's just you're just creating a better journey to get to that. You really are, and I think um, I actually think our job is to help them extract what they want. Mm. I don't think most people know what they want. Mm. It's just the truth, um, and the ones that really know it in detail probably need us less. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I really want this in that year and I want to have this much income. And it's like, right. They probably are the type that are going to then work out how to get there themselves. Mm. Whereas the well, ones- Especially with more, t- more and more tools available. Right, online, mm. robo, all that sort of stuff. So but there's the ones that are just sort of wandering around aimlessly, which is most of us, to be frank, then they need help getting that clarity. Mm. They need help with their purpose. Just like us as business owners often need consultants to help us with our purpose as a business. Mm. Right? That's because it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we need to acknowledge that for the public and help them get there. Yeah, it's exciting. Mm. Hmm. So what else is happening? What else is happening? Well, we're spending a lot of time on that. So a lot of – actually, one of the things we're trying to do is get on the speaker circuit outside the industry, which – International or, or Even in local, Australia. but both. Mm. Um, and – that's a bit different. So you don't see many advisors out there on the speaker circuit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's the usual people we've probably all seen at conferences. And so what we're aiming to do is get um, me on the panel for, you know, employer conferences and things like that. So that's a different marketing exercise again. Mm. You know, and so that's been interesting. So, you know, do I market myself as a financial advisor or is it me as an author or is it me as a pre- – so it's, you know, tapping into you what you add value. Yeah. Exactly. So, so yeah, that um, – and that's that's been interesting. And what's what's fascinating, though, like we were talking about before, where you partner with people that that have what you don't have, and it works in conjunction, is we're actually starting to have conversations with advisors that say engage with employers, mm. and what they want to do is partner with with me for the event where I go and present. Mm-hmm. but the leads that come out of that go to the advisor. Mm-hmm. So because it's something I love to do, I've got a concise offer, we've got the dream concert, you know, all that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. and then the advisor takes it on because they recognise they're not the one that wants to get up, get the training to be a high-quality speaker and then get up and present in front of 600 staff at the, I don't know, Optus Annual Conference or whatever it is. So, so yeah, it's been interesting. So that's the biggest challenge for for me at the moment because inside the industry of course not many of us have to reach out much to get to most people mm. whereas getting in front of the person that organises the flight centre annual conference or the whatever that's a tougher gig that's tougher to and do there's a lot of opportunity arguably yeah potentially and what I'd love to do so my hope is I'm sort of keeping a diary of the process um, my hope is that if I break this ground, we could then have more advisors doing similar for their own, whatever their own way of connecting is, whatever their own story is mm. or or presentation is. I can prove it can be done. We can sort of build a, a network. Of, yeah, and then build a, a network of, of people from the industry that are going broader mm. in terms of who we're reaching. That's exciting. Mm. Who, who would have thought Peter wouldn't rest with just the advice industry? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? The It's been interesting. The dream thing was a bit accidental, but we've worked out it. It just applies to everything. So mm. if we can inspire and help act the public. Yeah, that the corporate advisors, element. We can do the, right. We've yeah. even we've, we've built out a team building exercise for institutions using the dream concept. So if you, if you and I share 20-something of our dreams we've written down, mm. the understanding we have about each other, the way we work, what inspires us, mm. what is, is quite different. Mm. Whereas a lot of team building exercises really don't build teams It's a lot all. of depth. There's no sharing. Right. It's not there. It's personal. Like you might 
you might get like, okay, this is how, understanding how they are, but you may not be connecting. You're like, okay, no. well. Thanks for doing that thing I asked you Adrian, to do. Also. Adrian may need to be told, uh, reminded about certain things because he, he gets distracted easily. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I'll try to remember that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you can get a room and particularly um, a whole lot of, like a diverse team, you know, you'll have people that are quite different. Difference is scary until you understand more. And mm. then when you understand more, it's a, f- it's a frame of reference to communicate. What's the drive behind it? Right, right, and what interests them. And so then, you know, like we've just mentioned Star Wars stuff. You know, people know that they – I mean, I get all sorts of people connecting with me that I've never met that have seen me, like now, talking about Star Wars. Mm. And that's the first thing they say to me. Now, why does that matter? Well, they might not have said anything before, but mm. they remember that I love it. They come up to me and they talk to me about it. Mm-hmm. Or they've just seen the movie. Peter, I just had to tell you. Yeah. You know, so It's a unique attribute it's a, about you. It that, is, yeah. and it's a frame of reference. It's a way that you can you can converse. So it's applying like essentially what's done in the advice process to an extent because you're, you're learning that stuff about your clients all the time. Yeah. Actually going, well, this stuff's the reason we do that. Like obviously we need to understand more about them, but – that process has always created a great connection with the client. Yeah, definitely. And in all these other areas of life and business, et cetera, that connection would be really valuable as well. It will because our empathy. So you were talking before about your previous podcast you recorded mm. where it was about putting yourself in somebody else's shoes. Mm. Um, that empathy creates connection and it's a glue. And we, d- we actually did this some time ago before we had the dreams concept with the team. And so we were doing a bit of a brainstorming day. And mm-hmm. at the start, I got the team to answer some questions we had. Um, and one of them was list all of the continents you travel to or the places you mm-hmm. travel to. And what was interesting is one of our team, Hillary, who's older and very experienced, she's one of those support people that's really experienced, been around forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's, you know, she's... Um, an older generation. And so therefore the rest of the team's perception of who she is, is tainted by her age. Mm. Right. And who she is now. She has seen more of the world than almost anybody I know. Mm. We all discovered. So backpacking through Africa to connecting parts of countries, nobody would have traveled to then, let alone now, Mm -hmm. like she's, she's an adventurer. And so the sharing of this stuff creates an understanding and an interest with people that otherwise I think we can really put in boxes, right? We just sort of judge, yep. not in a harsh way, but yeah, we yeah. just we discount who they are to a very narrow sense. Yeah. It's about broadening it again. It is. And, and the way in which you communicate, the empathy you show, the interest you show, mm-hmm. all of that's good. You know, all of that, all of that richness um, is how great teams work, great ideas happen, mm. and change happens. Mm. You know, whereas if we just think narrow, think the same, um, you're a you're a triangle and I'm a square and he's a circle. Like if we just mm. have that sort of narrow perception of life, that's not how anything changes. Mm. Um, you know, so that understanding is really important. Well, if people want to change and they've been inspired by something that's been said in our podcast today, yep. Where can they go? What can they do? So they should reach out on LinkedIn mm-hmm. um, or on Facebook, Peter D. Um, and it's literally P-E-I-T-A-D on both of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm now being asked to present at dealer group conferences. Mm-hmm. Um, we're even actually probably going to have start having sessions that people can sort of turn up at a pub and, and come themselves. So they don't mm-hmm. have to wait for a big event. So reach out and just ask. I'm interacting with Would advisors all the time. Would it be also specifically around speaking as well if people are interested? Correct, um, definitely. If there's enough demand, you can facilitate. Definitely. Yeah. So if there's a topic in particular. So <laughs> lots of the things that we've come up with is just because I get asked, mm. right? So it's not, once again, I'm not an expert. We just curate. Well, I was actually going, you know? I'm talking about other advisors that want to get into speaking because that was Oh, yeah, thing definitely. That, yeah. So, so in fact, if um, if there was enough people, enough advisors that said, you know what, Peter, I want to I want to start developing my skills as a speaker, um, I know exactly who I could partner with to develop some stuff sessions mm. to get that done without a doubt it's just the level of interest yeah um cool. so if people want to want to tweet me or facebook or linkedin stalking whichever type of stalking appeals yeah. to you get 10 uh, friends and sh- <laughs> pedal that's sort it the out thing 100 percent. so you get some people together and we'll get it done that's awesome yay thank you Peter. not at all lovely to be here and uh i think i'm due another snickers yeah absolutely you've earned it <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you next time. See ya.